Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Ms. Fakula. Uh, respected director, uh, panel of judges for the competition, teachers from uh, the participating schools, and uh, my colleagues, and uh, participants, and my dear friends and students here. Uh, I am extremely elated to be uh, presented with this opportunity to welcome you all to this uh, inter school debate and singing competition being organized by Tetsa College Higher Secondary. Uh, we have been planning this uh, to conduct such an event for the last uh, couple of years, but uh, with the pandemic, uh, things were not looking very good. But I am overjoyed, in fact, to you know that this has come to uh, fruition this, this year. Um, we have, including Tetsa College today, 10 schools participating uh, in this inter-school debate and singing competition. Uh, I am extremely grateful to the authorities, the teachers and the participants from the different schools that are present here today uh, for your uh, you know, enthusiasm and for your you know, positive response uh, to the competition that we are uh, holding today. Um, students are the future of tomorrow. And uh, I am proud, in fact, to say that we are providing them a platform to display their talent, uh, display their talents, and at the same time, hone their skills um, to make them uh, successful and um, responsible citizens uh, tomorrow. Uh, the conduct of such programs, I believe, is in concurrence with the mission uh, of Tetsa College, that is to empower people towards lifelong excellence. I hope the experiences gained today will continue to motivate and cherish the young minds that are present here today. Um, once again, a very warm welcome to all of you uh, and good luck to the participants. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We are honored to have with us this morning Sir Kulo Lorin, the director of Tetzel College. I request, sir, to kindly take the stage. Good morning, everyone. It is such an honor and a pleasure to be standing in front of uh, 10 institutions and a bunch of young people who are going to be deba debating about social media and also probably singing some fantastic songs and maybe a bunch of people who are probably going to be doing a lot more once you leave this place. I, I'd like to make sure that I take as little time as possible. The ones who will be speaking are going to be the debaters. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you rather than you listening right now. I'm sure you have listened and heard so much advice. You get it from your parents, your teachers, your friends, and you must be giving advice to yourself also every day but uh, the hard part is not the advice the hard part is actually following it if you google anything or if you check online for anything you can even build a rocket if you were to follow all the instructions so doing the right thing and the way to do it how i mean learning to build a billion dollar business all the instructions are right there. Passing your exams and clearing your class 11, 12 and topping it, you already know what you have to do. The problem is not um, the technique, the idea or anything. The problem is that even if we know everything, we're not able to do it, right? That is probably the biggest challenge 
for the whole world because the best management techniques, the best educational techniques, everything is right out there for everyone now in today's world. But what we need to do is not just talk, it's we now need to start doing things. So for all of you who are debating today, congratulations for being selected to represent your school and being the voice of your institution. It is a big responsibility and I don't want to make you nervous, but uh, make your school and institution proud. For all of you who are representing your institution to sing as well. There might have been 500 students, 600, 1,000, 2,000 students from your institution, but you are the one present today. So I want to encourage each one of you, okay? You know what it is, but and I know how difficult it is, but I want you to do your best. And it's everything in life, though, is not just about winning. It is being able to step up and act and do something. So, with those few words, I'm going to do exactly what I said and not talk long. <laughs> and I would like to wish each and every one of you all the very best. And I'd like to end by stating one of our uh, taglines that is, you should dream, you should think, and you should do. Good luck, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your encouraging words. We shall start now with our debate competition. To begin with, I would like to introduce the judging panels. Dr. Jenny, the coordinator for, from Mass Communication Department at So College. <laughs> Sir Mangai Pong, Assistant Professor, English Department at So College. Currently pursuing PhD from Cotton University, Kwati. We have Sir Mashiwil from Greenwood School <laughs> Political Science Department. Thank you so much for your time. President of our alumni. And yes, Mashiwil is our, is the president of Alumni Tetso College. <laughs> now I request the participants of debate competition to kindly take the stage as I call out your name. Participant number one, Tianen Longhumer from DMI St. Joseph Global School. Yes, kindly take the stage. Participant number two, Palak Akarwal St. Mary Higher Secondary School. Participant number three, Dino Saleh from Greenwood Higher Secondary School. Participant number four, Kehin Yesep from Tetso College. Participant number six, Vivika from Unity Christian Higher Secondary School. Participant number seven, Atok Pong from Patkai Christian Higher Secondary School. <laughs> Participant number eight, Rayman Rai from Holodeli School. <laughs> Participant number nine, Marilyn La from Hope Academy. <laughs> These are the participants going in favor of the subject. Participant number 10, El Shelley from Hope Academy. <laughs> Participant number 12, Ten Pang Pong from Unity Christian Higher Secondary School. <laughs> Participant number 13, Tokupu from Holotoli School. <laughs> Participant number 14, Verulu from Tetso College. 
Participant number 15, Werite from Patkai Christian Higher Secondary School. Participant number 16, Adrian Pratham from Greenwood Higher Secondary School. Participant number 17, Kezia H. Roy from St. Mary Higher Secondary School. Participant number 18, Delili Love from St. Joseph Global School. These are the participants going against the motion.
sorry for the inconvenience. We have one more school joining us for the debate. Participant number five, a KD from Carmel Higher Secondary School. I request to kindly take the stage. He will be going in favor of the motion. Participant number 11, Ruzani from Carmel Higher Secondary School. She will be going against the motion. So we have two rounds for debate competition. To start with the first round, I would like to highlight the rules and regulation. Each participant will be given a maximum five minutes time to speak either in favor or against the motion. A warning bell will be given after four minutes and the final bell will be given after five minutes. If the participants exceed the allocated time, then marks will be deducted at the discretion of the judges. So to start with the first round, I request the participants to take turns alternatively. First, we shall start from the motion. The second, one participant from against, and third, one participant from motion, and then fourth, against. So kindly take turns. I request the participants to know your time, okay. So we can start from the motion. A very good morning to one and all present here. I'm Palaka Garbal from class 12 Commerce on behalf of St. Mary's High Secondary School. And today I sent uh, I, I, strong, I strongly stand here in favor of the topic that is social media causes more harm than good. As there are tons and tons of disadvantages of social media. According to statistics, 3.96 billion users worldwide are using social media. Uh, and consider that 4.5 billion people are using internet. Uh, strangely, it is a very uh, large population. The first thing that comes to our mind when we talk about this advantage of social media is addiction. Yes, social media is very addictive and anything which is addictive is destructive. Once when people get addicted to social media, it is very difficult for them to come out of it. A relatable example I can give is uh, an incident took place a few months ago. A boy killed his mother, his own mother, just because uh, her, she was annoyed and uh, irritated just because her, uh, his mother was not allowing him to use social media. So from here we come to know how addictive the social media can be. Hacking is also one of the major causes of social media. Many among us, we, uh, we come to a situation, we have to create a new account just because our old account was hacked and the cyber was not able to find it. Not only this, but cyberbullying is also a very major cause of social media. Many of us, we are victims of cyberbullying. It's 21st century in 2022. Every one of us, we are so much uh, on posting on social media like uh, stories, snaps, hashtag we are here enjoying with friends, uh, with family, but we never know how many accounts are spying us or how many accounts are stalking us. One, one post of ours can let the stalker or the person we never want to share information with can know our daily life routine, which can be very dangerous, such as light treatment. A very risky uh, thing that I can speak about social media is that many of us, uh, many among us, uh, we will be knowing about trends which were going on TikToks and Reels, that is Kiki Challenge, Typo Challenge and all. The, cheat, uh, uh, the Kiki Challenge, it involves jumping out of the moving car and dancing while the driver is driving at the same time he is capturing the video, which is extremely very dangerous and risky. Talking about the Typo Challenge, so it, uh, it was something like uh, taking a kind of dangerous uh, detergents into their mouths, which was also a 
which was also very dangerous. It was observed by health community that after this strain got viral, there was 20% increase in the poisonous incidence. And talking about the privacy and social media, how can we forget the memorable fact of 2016 when Mark Zuckerberg was sued $1.5 million US dollars for leaking 2.5 million people's information. If such a multinational company cannot be trusted, how can we, uh, how can we trust other social sites? And social media also distracts uh, self-esteem and uh, mental health of a person. Uh, I want to recollect you all to the Blue Well game. The Blue Well game was controlled by WhatsApp, so it is also a part of social media, right? So uh, many people decided for that social uh, Blue Well game. The last thing I will want to say that a nuclear bomb is created to save a country, but that nuclear bomb can destroy the whole world. That is what social media is all about. Thank you. from the against. Participant number 10 can go ahead. Good morning everyone, respected panel of judges, teachers and students. My name is Elshi Chishi of grade 12 from Hope Academy and I'm proud to be speaking against the motion, social media does more harm than good. There is no doubt that social media is a powerful tool today that serves various functions. Apart from its main purpose of aiding communication between people globally, it also has been proven effective in marketing as well as in influencing communities. More important, importantly, it has become very useful in saving lives. Social media is a way to enhance connectivity. It effortlessly helps us to stay in contact with family and friends from all over the world be it through a simple good morning text to video calls. I hope most of us here are fans of Dreams Unlimited. They provide us excellent satirical entertainment, which in return sustains their livelihood through the so-called harmful social media. Small businesses have grown a lot thanks to social media, especially during the pandemic. Top companies like Amazon, Mercedes, Benz, AG directly approach candidates through social networking sites like LinkedIn without either party having to send uh, schedule in-person appointments or send time-consuming letters. Living in the 21st century, social media helps us to go paperless, which being eco-friendly and sustainable is the need of the hour. Social media has the role to empower students and teachers to use new ways of sharing information and building a community. I don't have to tell you this. You and I are products of online classes, and during the past two years of the pandemic, if it hadn't been for social media platforms like WhatsApp, Google Classroom, Zoom, YouTube, etc., educational institutes like ours would have crashed. In addition to our outstanding teachers, Social media allows us to learn from renowned experts and professionals. I'm sure you're all familiar with Vidantu and Baijus, and some are even availing of their study, study materials. Statistics show that 77% of teachers find digital tools helpful. 59% of schools say that students use social media for educational purposes. Another and that was all in 2016, so you can imagine the numbers have been accelerating ever since. Another study showed that 81% of teenagers felt that social media had a positive effect on their lives. Social media is a way to save lives, not just by the 24-7 suicide prevention hotlines, but by spreading awareness and motivating people. When a natural disaster strikes and causes devastating destruction, Social media is the ideal vehicle to deliver messages asking for worldwide support. This helps stories that begin locally to gain national or global attention. What can be better than saving a life? Isn't everything else secondary? 
social media is truly a powerful tool for providing access to information and giving platform to people, especially the marginalized. Rape reporting is particularly problematic in India due to its cultural apathy and victim blaming. This all changed thanks to social media. The Delhi gang rape of de December 16, 2012, which came to be known as the Nirbhaya case, generated widespread national and international coverage. The uproar forced the then government to act and as a result, the death penalty for rape and zero FIR. Social media has emboldened victims to stand forward and demand justice. Other examples are the Black Lives Matter and hashtag MeToo movements. When the internet was first introduced, many people were against it because it has so many pros and cons depending on how it is used. But now we cannot live without it because social media does so much more good than harm. And whether you like it or not, social media is going to develop on a much greater scale. And we must, as with everything in life, whether it be it, um, chocolate, carbs, use it in moderation. Don't be the slave of social media. Be the master of your digital well-being. Thank you. Participant number one. participants, judges, and to my dear comrades. My name is H.B. Vizini Kiki, representing Carmel Higher Secondary School. Against, speaking against, social media does not have, does not have, sorry, social media does more harm than good. I would definitely make my objection to this statement because just because it says so, it doesn't prove its actual prepositions that social media does more harm than good. I'd like to raise a question. Is there anyone out here not intact with social media platforms? By social media, I mean WhatsApp, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and so much more. You see, in our society, any time a technology is introduced that brings humanity closer, that helps us understand each other, we hear the same question. Is it bad for us? To which many of them answer is a yes. I agree that it is because of human intentions that the information provided to us can be taken in, in the worst way. But if I had to argue with it, I'd say that it, be, it is because of social media that the unheard voices are being heard. It is because of messaging systems and emails that 
that we educate, we, edu we educate and organize. And it is through social media that we are able, we were able, we were able to come through the pandemic session, leading us to where we are here right now, right here. In this moment, social media is not only about websites and contents, but social media is about experiences, which perhaps many of us lack. You know, there is so much goodness that social media gives us, but we never tend to appreciate it. We never tend to look to the good, but instead go with the negative. I'd say we change that mindset here, right here. Being cyberbullying, okay, if people mention it, that is dependent on the mindset of the people. You know, just because social media, just because people are making Mis misusing social media does not prove that it does more harm than it does good. There are tons of good that social media does. It's just that we are affected by the negative. Social media, well, I believe that social media is definitely empowering us. It is connecting billions of people here. And humanity has never been more committed. Humanity has never been more connected. Through social media, we, why, you know, if we choose social media, why not do something extraordinary than just be normal? In our world, there are lots of excuses given for social media, the misusing of social media, but I believe that social media have definitely done tons of good to us from broadening our mindset to educational opportunities, to helping us grow the system. It has not only affected and broadened our mindset, but it also has brought changes, a good one, good changes. So instead of looking at the negative, I'd say we see what good it, do, what good it did. It helped millions of people connect, and therefore, we, are, we were able to be close with our loved ones. Thank you, that is all for now. Participant number three. Good morning, everyone. Respected director, panel of judges, fellow participants, and to you all present here. I'm Tino Saleki here from Greenwood School, and today I'll be speaking on the affirmative. I'd like to start by saying that I'm certainly not against social media. Any one of my friends or followers would tell you that I'm certainly not averse to the semi-regular Instagram post, Facebook upload, or Snapchat story. Perhaps more, even more importantly as a student, social media allows me to effortlessly stay in contact with my friends and family living in different places. More importantly still, social media acts as a positive implication for many people living in developing countries. But the fact of the matter is that the motion put before us today is not about the benefits of social media. The motion put before us today is social media does more harm than good. As a society, we are constantly feeling the need to be seen by massive amount of people. We are growing more and more dependent on instant gratification, and in order to feel included, we are forced to post, gram, tweet, snap, react, or message. Our real human connections are being replaced by virtual relationships, and the simple truth is that for the most part, we are spending huge proportions of our time in the digital universe. Social media limits our creative imagination. For instance, say many of us present here have Google for help with today's topic. Social media degrades our vocabulary skills through constant use of acronyms. If we can all agree that social media uh, is affecting us as individuals and changing the way that we behave, it follows that social media is affecting the way that we interact with each other in the physical world. Research from the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine studied over 1,700 people between the ages of 19 and 32. It was found that participants were spending 61 minutes per day on social media and visiting social media websites 30 times per week. This research was conducted in 2014 and the numbers have been increasing steadily since that time. Over one quarter of the young people surveyed displayed indicators of high level of depression and the people who most frequently visit social media are found to be 2.7 times more likely 
to develop liberation than the average. Now the opposition might argue that this data is inaccurate. Perhaps it is people who are already depressed and turning on social media as an outlet. Even more troubling than the relationship between social media and depression is the relationship between social media and eating disorders in young people. And I'm not just talking about young girls. Eating disorders today is affecting people of all ages, people of all races, people of all genders, and people from all socioeconomic backgrounds. Platforms like um, Tumblr, Instagram, Facebook are providing youths with distorted images of how their bodies should look like. And this is having a far-reaching mental illness on the youth. The mere fact that Instagram and Facebook have uh, simple methods for reporting self-harming and societal contents is very respectable, but at the same time, it is also a chilling indictment of the extent of this problem. So if we just take a few steps back and examine the question that we have so far looked at, why is social media causing depression, why is social media causing eating disorders, and, uh, and many other whys? The answer is one that I think we all inherently know. By being constantly presented with highly idolized views of abused social media, illicit feelings of envy and inadequacy are developed by instilling us with the often false belief that other people are living more successful and more fulfilling lives. Social media is not evil, but it can very well be dishonest. It presents us with a standard that is unrealistic, a reality that is not reliable, um, a world that has been filtered and altered. So today I say to you all, it's time to stop stalking and start talking. We can only learn more when we look someone in the eye rather than looking at, at your social media profile. Proud to propose, thank you. Participant number 12. Good morning to you all, respected judges, my worthy opponents, and to everyone present here. My name is Tan Bang Pong, and I am from Unity Christian Higher Secondary School. And I strongly stand here to argue that social media does more good than harm. Because in this world, social media has become a very important aspect of our life. Most of us sitting here and speaking, we all have taken some ideas from social media, which has helped us to speak against, or against the motion or through the motion group. So it has helped us to speak today. And examples during the pandemic, if it wasn't for social media, we wouldn't all be here. We don't have reached the classes which we have reached and I think that social media is, is playing a very big role and we may say that it is affecting our life and it is eating our time or it's affecting our studies but I would, I would say that it's not affecting our studies if you and I know how to use it or use our time or we are punctual we can use it in the best way and make the best out of it for example there are so many YouTubers Naga YouTubers like Ken Flo, Jay Bolen and many more because even if you don't do anything, we, we can just show some eating food and all and we can become one of the influencers for the young people. And I think that this is also one of uh, encouragement to everyone. If you don't have anything to do, I request you all to become a YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> and in today's world, social media has become very important that it just bring all the world together in one as a one neighborhood because anything that happened outside in a millisecond it reaches us and it has become one of our important aspects because now through social media we began together and we can all be peace and make a better living for our world in the future I have experienced that Many of our children, before the age of five, before they started going to school, they all learn ABC and all through social media. And uh, after they go start going to schools, it helps them and also helps the teacher in teaching them the ABC alphabets and all. So, social media does not harm us, but it has 
help us in many ways. So thank you. A slide information. For this round, the participants will be judged individually. Participant number four can kindly take the stage. Gentlemen, my name is Kehinya Sep, representing Tesla College, and I'll be speaking for the motion on the topic Social Media Does More Harm Than Good. Social media can and does many detrimental problems for far too many of its users. As a society, we are constantly feeling the need to be seen by a massive amount of people. We are growing more and more dependent on instant gratification and to feel included. Social media elicits feeling of envy and inadequacy by instilling us the idea that often false belief that other people are living more fulfilling lives. Social media is not evil, but it can very well be dishonest. Social media enables the spread of unreliable and false information. A study published in the journal Science found that lies spread six times faster than the truth on Twitter. A University of Michigan study found that even when false information is corrected, the number of people who share the correction via social media is lower than the number of people who have seen the false information. The use of social media is correlated with personality and brain disorders. A University of Pittsburgh study found that social media use significantly associated with increased depression amongst adults reaching age 19 and 32. The idea that you are missing out on certain things can impact your self-esteem, trigger anxiety, and fuel even greater social media use. Criminals use social media to commit and promote crimes. 78% of burglars admitted they use Facebook, Twitter, Google Street View to select victims' property. Social media facilitates cyberbullying. According to statistics published by Bullying Statistics in 2015, over 25% of adolescents have been bullied repeatedly through social media. Online gaming. Video games build community, providing a virtual form of interaction and a medium of social media. Some negative impacts are social disconnection, poor academic performance, escapism, and getting stuck in life. Pornography. Even though vast majority of pornographic material is posted by a small core of users, the adult content reaches a wider audience. Facebook intentionally chose to prioritize hateful, divisive, sensationalist content over neutral and positive content in order to increase engagement. Instagram's algorithm amplifies content that promotes social comparison, body dissatisfaction, decreased self-esteem and anxiety around the pressure to look perfect, particularly among girls and young women. Spending too much time engaging with social media can make us feel more lonely and isolated and exacerbate mental health problems. Social media is a giant paradox. A paradox because by trying to make us feel more connected, it has done the opposite. If that is what social media does to each and every one of us, then we can come to the conclusion that social media does more harm than good. Thank you. Participant number 13. Good morning, everyone. Uh, respected sir, panel of judges, and my worthy opponents. My name is Rihan Rai, probably representing Holitoli School, and today I'll be speaking against the motion that forward by the House. Social media is doing more harm than benefit. I shall begin. 
I wake up every morning, and the first thing I do is FaceTime my mom. I really miss her. This was said by my friend who lives in a hostel in Delhi. This clearly shows how social media is connecting us with the rest of the world, regardless of where we live. More than half of the world population, 58.4%, that is 4.6 billion people, are on social media today. They have created their own tiny world within these social platforms. Social media reduces social barriers. It connects people on the strength of human values, not identities, said by Narendra Modi. One of the most important feature and one of the most important feature of social media is its connectivity. It connects people and users from all over the world at the same time. Many users, especially teenagers, use social media to express their emotions and feelings. Basically what they're trying to do is making people aware of what's going on in their life. And I believe that's one of the best ways to convey your message and keep things and take things out of your heart when it is so difficult to talk to someone about your issues in person. Social media helps in spreading awareness. Being the fastest means of communication, social media spreads awareness, information, and ideas to masses within seconds. For example, back in the year 2020, people of India learned about the terror of COVID-19 two weeks before the first case was reported in India. India is a vast country where there exist different types of people, that is from different communities, religion, and other diverse backgrounds. Social media helps in the unification of people by connecting them using the same platforms. Every user can enjoy the feeling of oneness by learning and enlightening themselves about different culture, tradition, religion, and ideas of people. We live in a world full of anxiety, stress, and problems. Social media can act as a stress buster or mental health reliever. There are numerous cases where people find someone and where people where people bond and find someone generating positive vibes and attraction. This helps people suffering from mental illness uh, do better in life and keep moving. Social media acts as a promoter for many online companies. 2.4 billion people run their business on social media. Last year, 1.7 billion people shopped online. And it is not surprising to know that 68% of these companies earn income in millions. Recognition and fame is things that people want today. Social media gives you enough recognition and fame. It also gives you the appreciation you deserve from the masses. Social media has definitely proved to be an asset in the field of education. Back in year 2020, when there was complete lockdown, it was these social platforms that helped us be in contact with our teachers. The entire organization of community was made into a global classroom on these social platforms. People in looks People in looks and corners of the world can attend online lectures delivered by resourceful people. The world's best resource can be made available to all the desired people with the involvement of social media. In my conclusion, I would like to say that social media such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat have become an integral part of a life. These platforms give you a stage where you can share your knowledge and ideas to people and gain credibility and gain credibility in your field or specialism. Social media leads to evolution, revolution, evolution and revolution of mind and heart of people. Fostering information, literacy and awareness in the nation. With this, I strongly disagree with the house that social media is doing more harm than benefit. Thank you. Number five. Hey, everyone, good morning, you all know. Respect the panel of judges, my working contributors, and you all, my dear brothers and sisters. Today, I'll be speaking on behalf of motion. 
if I have to answer in one word, yes, it's yes. Social media does way more harm to good. The worst thing about any social media platform is that these are highly addictive. Be it Facebook, Instagram, or Snapchat, WhatsApp, their time shows you only the narratives you are interested in. It narrows down your thinking capabilities and makes you vulnerable to new ideas. Apart from that, social media is the biggest reason for the mental health problems these days. You may feel it left out by seeing pictures and videos of all the influencers out there, and you may feel less of your own life. Not only does it hurt your self-esteem, but it can sometimes lead to anxiety and depression. Students find it hard to focus on their studies for social medias. Moreover, social medias rather ironically kills your social skills and makes you isolated from real life connections with your friends and families. Excessive use of social media is more harm than good. It is better to control your consumption to stay alert and safe. Thank you. Participant number 14. Greetings one and all present here, respected judges, fellow contenders, teachers, and my dear classmates. My name is Barry Lizuo, representing Tetsa College from class 12, and today I'll be speaking against the motion, social media does more harm than good. When social media comes up in a conversation, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Maybe people scrolling through the internet or posting something new. It is much more than that. Social media is a very, very wide and complex topic. It is a platform meant to connect people, empower people, spread awareness, and gain knowledge. Our perception of social media is usually confined to apps like Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat. Actually, social media can be broken into six types, which include social networking, bookmarking, social news, media sharing, microblogging, and online forum sites. Here's an example for each site. Social marketing or media sharing. Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn. Bookmarking sites, Pinterest, Reddit. Social media sites, social news sites, sorry. BBC, BuzzFeed News. And microblogging sites, Tumblr, Twitter. Online forum sites like Quora and Brainview. Let's talk about the good social media has done. LinkedIn, it's an employment-oriented online service. In 2022, job seekers with a comprehensive LinkedIn profile have a 71% higher chance of getting a job interview. Apps like Instagram and YouTube are so saturated with people that false information, hate comments, or something you find offensive is bound to pop up. So why not make use of more reliable and credible apps like LinkedIn? Second, access to learning. Social networking sites have been beneficial for the underprivileged by giving opportunities to learn skills, take up courses, and even get college degrees through a laptop and a stable internet connection. Udemy, Skillshare, and Coursera are credible sites where one can teach and learn too. Third, the hashtag MeToo movement. This movement was started for the victims of sexual assault, abuse, and rape in Hollywood against producer Harvey Weinstein. Over 80 women accused this man of such heinous acts over the course of his career. The hashtag was tweeted more than 500,000 times and you, uh, by October 16, 2017 and used in more than 12 million posts in the first 24 hours on Facebook. The movement has grown to be inclusive with, and given rise to a new hashtag, hashtag him too, which focus on male victims of sexual abuse and rape. Social media has made fundraising and crowdfunding more efficient and faster since outreach has become easier. Organizations like Keto is India's best medical crowdfunding platform. Keto has successfully had 2 lakh plus fundraisers and 55 lakh donors. Social media is the most useful means for asking support during natural disasters. Through social media, these stories get, these stories get more coverage, which, 
results into better assistance. Indian fans of the K-pop group BTS raised around $29,000 for COVID-19 relief during April 2021. People say that social media propagates insecurities. I disagree. I believe insecurities are our own innate problem as humans. We set unrealistic standards for both men and women, and the problem is within ourselves. We cannot blame a technological platform for making us feel insecure when we hold our others and ourselves to such standards. Growing up outside Nagaland made me realize how underrepresented we Nagas are. In an overpopulated and diverse country like India, marginalized communities are sidelined. For us, it is very hard to be successful in the entertainment industry. We are victims of racism stereotyped against because people do not even know we exist. There are some examples of successful channels and influencers from Nagaland. Dreams Unlimited, Alobo Naga, and Andrea Kavichusa. Social media has done harm, and there is a lot of room for improvement. However, I believe it has revolutionized our way of life and brought change for the better. As I end my statement, I would like to remind you that it is impossible for such a vast platform to not have done any harm, but the possibilities of doing good are endless. Thank you. Participant number six. of life right now is that science gathers knowledge faster than society gathers wisdom. Isaac Asimov. In this age, in this day and age of humanity, we never have been more connected with 4.70 billion users on the internet and 40% of our, of our global population on social media. Our, so, our species have undergone a technological revolution in which we have witnessed. At the beginning of 2010, only 15% of our population used social media, and that was, that was before the likes of Instagram and Snapchat. Today, today, an average person spends 2 hours and 27 minutes a day on social media. These social media platforms are designed in such a way that they target human reactions, such as the dopamine effect. What is dopamine, dopamine effect? So basically, dopamine effect uh, makes us feel happy. It's a, it's a neurotransmitter that makes us feel happy uh, as a reward of achieving things like receiving likes on our Facebook posts or Instagram posts. Uh, Instagram posts. Uh, truly, we've come, we rely too much on people's opinions, causing insecurities, and the number of likes we receive represent how valuable we are. Mm. It is ironical that everyone is connected but no one is really connecting. It's like iso isolating yourself in a glass house where you see everything and yet you're still alone. Another issue of social media uh, is that the use of um, the use of filters which enables the users to enables the users to produce more pleasing versions of themselves which is not true. And uh, this raises unnecessary standards, which which most teenagers are face, which most teenagers are sorry, uh, many te teenagers due to these insecurities today are wanting to get plastic surgeries, due to which surgeons have coined the term uh, Snapchat dysmorphia. Snapchat dysmorphia. Another feature of uh, social media that is um, affecting the youth today. Uh, is, the is the like button and the view count. Since we are depending on our on the like button, on the like and the number of likes and view counts to determine whether we are popular or we're not popular in life, people are people tend to I would like to conclude by saying that social media does not harm people. Participant number 15. Good morning, honorable judges, teachers, and my fellow opponents. 
Ai Weite of Class 12 Arts, representing Patkai Higher Secondary School, will be speaking against the motion, that is, social media does more harm than good. Everyone today is on some social media. Teenagers on TikToks, influencers on Instagram and Facebook, professionals and job seekers on LinkedIn, and many more. With so many facilities that social media has to offer, I do not consider social media as harmful. I'll tell you why. Let me first state some advantages of social media. Number one, communication. We use social media to communicate with our friends, relatives all over the world. It is not possible for us to uh, face, uh, talk face to face to them every time, every moment. And so it is the social media that offers us the platform to communicate with them. Two, learning. How do we cope up with the learning in this generation? Even the global pandemic that has uh, brought to us many challenges and difficulties, with social media, the learning tools that were available to us, we communicated with our teachers and were able to graduate our classes. Three, jobs and employment opportunities. Today, the uneducated, unemployed youth are getting so many information and ideas on how to get themselves employed, not only in the outside world, but through the social media, they are getting the chances to employ themselves. Uh, the influencers, such as, uh, the, such as on the platform like YouTube and Instagram, influencers are influencing people and they are earning at the same time. So that is how uh, they are working and this is the, the productivity that social media has given to us. For business. The best effective platform to promote business is on social media. And as well as the leaders can also uh, communicate and contact their business partners all over the world. It is next to impossible for us to meet the business partners every now and then and uh, the virtual video meetings help us and help the people to communicate with them. Number five, the last point is news and entertainment. receive a uh, different kind of news and all the situations events happening around us through the social media we have so many alternatives like TV newspapers radio but the social media is the first and easiest accessible platform to us that we get to know about the news the very fact that I'm standing here today is also because of the social media through the Tetsuo College Instagram page I came to know of this event and that is how I'm present here today. With so many facilities that social media has to offer, we cannot go a day without social media. Whether it's for communicating, learning or business, social media is here to stay and it will continue to impact our lives. In conclusion, I would like to say that Social media itself is not harmful. It is only how we use it, how we manage our time, and how we define ourselves while using it. Thank you. Participant number seven. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Most respected our judges, all the staff faculties from different school, my buddy Abone, and my dear fellow brothers and sisters. I am Mr. Kiyato Bong, representing on Pio Patkai Higher Secondary School. Today I stand here in front of you all, presenting my views in favor of the motion, such as media does more harm than good. Before I begin my speech, I would like to begin by saying that even in the topics, it is clearly mentioned that social media does more harm than good. What do we need to discuss more than that? In the topics, it is clearly mentioned that social media harm more than good, right? Okay, the first thing that is the most commanding and whatever I'm going to express, I will be speaking, passing on to the context and in which area we are lacking in today's generation. The first thing that is addiction. When I say words by the addiction, we need especially notice people who spend too much time on social media and especially with the youngsters that is you and me. We are spending 24 in the 4 in the social media. Am I right? And 
distracted mind. New message, notification updates. I'm constantly checking our mind to check the social media. And the second, the third point. Is there anyone sitting there without using Instagram, Facebook, and all? Today, with the youngsters, what we do? We are leaking our culture. We forget our culture. We are blindly imitating the other's cultures by using social media. Let me say this example. We immediately address, say, just take an example. We use sharing air, cancer media. It's all because of what? It's all from the social media because we are leaking our culture behind. We don't know what is happening in our society and what is happening around you. And the second point, that is hell issue. When social media was not there, we used to go out and play outdoor games and have a great time with our friends. But rather than that, what we do, young sirs, that is you and me. Because of spending too much on social media, social media have led us to rise in laziness, poor sleep among people, resulting in several health problems such as obesity, stress, and high blood pressure. The third thing that is most common thing that relationship issue. Every individual are now using social media as a platform for dating, marriage, the information provided on the social media as for well, eventually leading to divorce high toxic relationship and even the divorce and the most common thing how many youngsters that have lost their life on social media by attempting suicide and early marriage it's become our like culture it's all because related to social media and the second about the relationship issue lack of quality time with family parents and friends when social media was not there we used to have a good bonding relationship with our friends we used to spend time speaking to one another, great members. But unfortunately, do this because social media has been active in our present study. The relationship that we have with our parents and brothers will either scum. Therefore, a sense of loneliness and depression that is leading us on men that is among people, Dean else that is you and me. And the last thing about the misuse. Hacking, scamming, etc. And the last, the previous figure they have told about the online classes. If you think that the online class it is a negative impact, then last year that college student why they have organized about the online class for this. It's all because of that, right? And I would like to conclude by saying that I fear that technology will surpass human interaction and the world will have a generation of I thought. Thank you. Participant number 16. A very, good mor a very good morning and my a very good morning and my warm greetings to everyone. Sincerest respect to debate moderator and assistant director, faculty members, and judges of panel, panel of judges, teachers, and or anticipating anticipating audience. I, Adrian Pradhan from Greenwood School, will be uh, will, uh, will be uh, uh, hereby humbly express my thanks for your interest in this debate event. I will be speaking against the motion of the topic uh, against the motion of the topic. Social media does more harm than good. And by your permission, I would like to begin by saying that social media, social media has grown tremendously in the last few years. The way technology is growing, the way technology is growing, it's obvious that more and more people are going to grasp its uh, benefits. However, it, however, it has uh, both positive and negative effects in our society. As I will be speaking against the motion, I will, I would like to emphasize on the advantages of social media with few examples. It can aid in criminal investigations. Criminal cases like rape has even been overturned, uh, such as when Brian Banks, when Brian Banks was wrongly accused of sex, labeled as sex offender, had his mind, had his, uh, had his life ruined, and five years later his accusers contacted him on social media platform called Facebook and wanted to let bygones be bygones, and thus. 
finally, his name was cleared in 2016. It exposes us to different points of view, new ideas, and gives us the power to research on those opinions and open uh, and have your mind open to new and shiny points of view. Uh, social media, social media can literally, uh, social media can literally save a person's life. I would like to emphasize by saying that in 2015, a woman vacationing in Greece fell 30 feet off a cliff and ended up on a ledge. She made her Facebook account public, uh, took a picture of where she was and posted it on Facebook. In less than an hour, a diving instructor recognized where she was and the rescue team saved her. She was literally saved by social media. Social media helps find charities and hit specific needs of individuals. Sci uh, Websites like Keto has raised around almost 1,100 crores, 1100 crores for patients who need financial support, support, which is quite impressive. It can increase your knowledge on a college level or even higher. If you can't afford to go to college, but you really want to learn, the internet is always there to help. Social media can help. Social media can help achieve your own goals and support you with them. To achieve your goals, encouragement and support are really important. And social media can help you with that. In conclusion, I would like to say that social media changed, social media changed our life very much. Our life became more convenient because of social media, because it is a because it is a useful tool for us in the 21st century. It could help us to improve our life. However, we have to be aware on how to use them and it also depends on a person's mind on how they use it for their benefits and uh, therefore if we could therefore if you could use uh, social media smartly having social media in our lives would be a good opportunity and a change for us or and even for future generation as well thank you participant number eight A very good morning to everyone present here. Honorable panel of judges, teachers, students, and my work for the opponents. Today, I, Tokobusu, representing Holotori School, will be speaking for the motion that social, social media does more harm than good. We live in an age where we seem ever more disconnected under the pretense of connection. The American poet and playwright T.S. Eliot was once quoted distracted from distraction by distraction. Through his words, we are reminded of our interaction in wide arrays of platforms. The big tech companies behind those social media platforms are in a race for our attention. It's an attention economy on which they thrive upon. But let us not forget that our attention, that we control our attention, and we have equal opportunity choose the values and direction we want it to take. And this should not be anchored on a complex set of computation. I often thought it paradoxical to say, Alone Together, a title of a book by Mary Bashiri Turkle, a professor of social studies of science and technology at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. But as the world has moved on faster, I've begun to think that it is true and that we have come to a point where we expect more from technology than from each other. It laid, per it laid irony for me in how Facebook remembered my birthday unlike my mom did previous year. And I was sad, but yes, it's a reminder that such companies that run platforms knows us better than the person you call friends that are sitting on their left and right. And one of the best instances would be the Cambridge, uh, the Facebook Cambridge Analytica data scandal in the year 2010, where Facebook collected millions of user data without their consent with the British consultant firm Cambridge Analytica to establish a sophisticated model of psychological profile of each user. Now, doesn't this raise the privacy concern, but also ethical issues? And it eerily resembles that of the totalitarian and dystopian novel 1984 by George also. And now, fast forwarding 11 years from that incident, in January 6, 2021, 
The role witnessed Washington, D.C. get attacked by a mob of 2,000 to 2,500 people, all supporting Donald Trump on his loss of the presidential election. And in that, and amidst the political chaos, our friends, who we can probably call friends, at Meta, played a crucial role in catalyzing the whole riot through misinformation and hate speech. And in that instance, Facebook whistleblower Francis Hogan admitted that yes, Facebook themselves had turned a blind eye on this event and that their algorithm is optimized for content that brings engagement and reaction and that their own internal research shows that contents that are decisive and polarizing are easier to inspire people to anger than any other such emotions. And now this is a great reminder that social media platforms have grown so large for not a single person nor an organization to control and regulate it. In conclusion, in conclusion, yes, social media does more harm than good and that an unimaginable future holds for us if no dire action is taking place to control the ever-growing rock algorithms and the endless feed of dopamine and serotonin that has disconnected us all. I rest my case. Thank you. Participant number 17. Social media is not our enemy. It is our ally. It provides us with benefits which we, have not, which we did not knew before. Good morning everyone, my name is Kezia. I'm representing St. Mary. And today I stand here to present my views against the topic of social media does more harm than good. Social media, we are all very well aware of this topic. Every one of us know, how, uh, sorry, every one of us know and are very well aware of the social media. And the most important advantage the social media provides to us is education. Yes, education. Social media provides us with education. There are many apps, there are many social media platforms where we can get education. And not only we the students, but even it is very helpful for the teachers as well. Social media also helps to raise the voice of people. The people, those who are um, those who have been secluded from the society, like those LGBTQs, those uh, poor and underprivileged, we and all share, we all get a platform to share our opinions, our views, and to raise our voice through the social media. And so I greatly believe that it has been very beneficial for us to have this kind of big platform. And also, the best thing about social media is we get latest update on news. We can know what's happening on the other side of the world in chess and in a sense. Uh, also, it is a great platform for sharing our ideas, opinions. Social media is a platform to share our ideas, our opinions, and our views on uh, certain and particular things. In social media, we can connect with people. We can share our views and we can also share contents and we can also consume contents, which is a really good benefit for us. It also increases awareness among the teens. Now, if uh, there is no social media, there are many things which will not have been known about. Example, even the biggest example is during this COVID-19 pandemic. We have all seen that, sorry, Sorry, we have all seen that if there is no social media, there will have been a drastic fall for uh, in our studies. Social media has, uh, through the help of social medias, we could take classes, we could uh, get better, and also there are many people and who lives far away from us, like our relatives and friends who live overseas from us. But we can all get connected to them through social medias. If we ever miss them, if we ever want to talk with them, we can just call them up. We can just text them up and you know it is a great platform and it, it uh, covers up all the distance and all the barriers between us. In a striking social media platforms like Twitter, a single individual can, uh, uh, sorry, in a striking uh, 
social media platforms like Twitter, a single individual can raise a it can raise a voice against something that is going wrong and then it is greatly shared and being viral and it greatly helps. What I mean to say from this is that even a single voice is heard and shared through social media. Yes, there are a, there are a lot of there are issues and there are places where social media can improve and work on. There are needs for stronger privacy protections and there are uh, this increasing commonization has been disrupting us greatly. But I believe that the benefits of social media far overweighs all these disadvantages. I strongly believe that social media has provided us with great platform and opportunities. The opportunities available on social media are endless. Hence, social media does more harm uh, sorry, social media does more good than harm in retrospect. Thank you. Participant number nine. Fifteen years ago, Social media was an escape from reality. Now, the reality is an escape from social media. Respected advisor, teachers, faculty at Tetsuo College, esteemed panel of judges, participants, and fellow scholars present here today. I am Myrdila Longchar of Grade 12, representing Hope Academy at the Interschool Debate and Singing Competition 2022. Representing my views, in favor of the motion, social media does more harm than good. Social media is undeniably one of the most powerful tools ever created. But as Voltaire has rightly said, with great power comes great responsibility. With people are still ignorant about the underlying truth about social media. Social media is addicting, exploiting, and brainwashing us into creating a superficial and unrealistic expectation, beauty standard, and persona. It is an illustration of perfection based on our perception. We are envious of things, relationships, and lifestyles that don't even exist. Social media is an illusion. You can smile in the picture, but you be in horrible pain at the same time. It creates insecurity in people ruined reputation of somebody just because of cyberbullying and risk of fake news. In fact, you can find many examples for this in real life. Just think of the Carby Anglong case, which happened in the year 2018, where two innocent men were lynched by the public and beaten to death due to fake news spread on social media. Social media is not, if not used properly, can be addictive, which in most cases is. According to recent study, 210 million people are addicted to social media. Social media addiction, precisely social media slavery, is when we find happiness in the number of likes, followers, views, etc. we get on online. It creates unnecessary hype, per se, trends, TikTok challenges, causing people to waste more time on their phones instead of doing something productive. The irony here is that we the creators are now the slave of this manifesto that we created. It has turned the art of living into an art of performance. Good deeds should be done with good intentions, not for attention. We are living in an era where capturing moments using our phones is more important than actually living those moments with whoever is beside us. Fellow audience, when was the last time you had a meaningful conversation with your parents, with your loving siblings and friends? It is high time for a reality check. During accidents, riots, clashes, we see people recording 
taking photos, posting it on social media instead of actually helping them. Our main priority has changed from saving lives to the likes and views on social media. Are there any good Samaritans left in this present generation? Lastly, to summarize my position in this debate, I would like to challenge everyone to disconnect from social media to reconnect with one another. In a world of algorithms, hashtags, and followers, let us know the true importance of human connection. Thank you. Participant number 18. Along with a good campus debate, a very good morning to you all, respecting the melody of judges, teachers, uh, my dear opponents, brothers and sisters. Uh, I'm here representing the MIS and Joseph Global School, me, myself, David Lila Santam of the Garden Site. Uh, yes, we all know that social media has made it possible to com communicate uh, effortlessly and make friends from all over the world. It's not only that, but it allows us to. It's Social media has made it possible to communicate effortlessly and make friends from all over the world. It is, but it also allows us to interact with people, friends, followers. It also enables cyber police and dictators to terrorize and ruin their mental and physical health. Cyber police has taken its toll with the availability of the internet and multiple numbers of social media. Cyberbullying can take your mental, emotional, and social health to a downside level. Teenagers and adults also often fall victim to cyberbullying and cyberplashing. Online bullies and friends, making us anonymous user, can misuse innocent user. Blackmail them that can create mental scars and even compel people to self-harm in some cases. The second point, unrealistically, whenever you open social media apps, whether it is Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok, you can see dons of images, posts, travel blogs, and think how exemplary their lives are. All you want is a perfect body, but, nobody's, but nobody knows what happens behind the screen of social media. In order to conclude, I would like to say, social media addiction can lead to the cleanse of your personal life, concealing addictive behavior, stalking others, excessively promoting unhealthy behaviors. Thanks. Five minutes time for both the teams to discuss who will speak in rebuttal. Each team can have one rebuttal speech or can have two.
given to the participant for the second round. The first warning bell will be ring in 1 minute 30 seconds. The last bell will be after the 30 seconds, 2 minutes. That will be break, so refreshments will be provided for participants and the teachers. So kindly stay back during the break. mentioned that during the pandemic it helped us know more about the COVID-19 case but did you know that the social networking sites during the pandemic they hired psychologists and hypnosis to make us when are when they're uh, I mean like you see every day COVID-19 death rates but did you know that this is just to instill fear in us so they use psychology to uh, make the people afraid more afraid than they should be about the COVID-19 Second, they talked about business, how it helped businesses, but while it helped businesses uh, promote their brands, uh, 
there can be accident release of confidential information. Individuals with inside knowledge of your business might blur out your confidential information. In the previous years, in the earlier years before social media, a letter sent to the wrong address can, or even an email that ended up in the wrong inbox could be retrieved and the information is kept under wraps. But with the use of social media, once information is out, it's out. Next is, um, they also mention how it helps save lives. But what about the ones who have committed suicide due to social media? They mentioned about how we should know how to use our social media, but there is also um, social media hires psychologists to help us get glued to our phones. Before the notification bell was blue, but after the social media sites changed it to red, the, it increased the engagements in social networking sites. When asked in an interview, Bill Gates said that uh, people ask, what, what about your children? Your children will be very excited to hear about the new tablet. But Bill Gates replied that my children, I don't allow my children to use social media. So if you think about it, why do you think it is so? The creators are hiding something from us. There is so much more dangerous that we are not aware of. Thank you. Uh, very good morning again. So, I'd like to give a big thanks to our opponents for glorifying social media as I stand here to speak against it. For those who say that it is our decision, it is our insecurities, I doubt that, I highly doubt that. As it shows that apps such as Snapchat are designed in such a way to establish a gap in our mind, to program us into opening it. The best example being of the feature called SnapScore. We are influenced in such a way that we have to maintain a snap score for us, for instant gratification, as my friends have mentioned. And it is true that, that we are being influenced and programmed and brainwashed. And internal research that leaked to Wall Street Journal in the year 2021 suggested that in the UK and US, around 40% of those people that say that they themselves are unattractive was first they first came into this conclusion from the app itself. And Dr. Anna Lambert, a world-leading specialist in addiction, stated that in her book, The Dopamine Nation, that we are getting addicted to dopamine slowly through social media and the ever addiction. A high excess of dopamine causes addiction. And the problem with such organization and institutes that social media is that it is and it will never be controlled by a single person, nor regulated by anyone else. And therefore, misinformation will always be spread. Unlike that of how newspapers, our traditional newspapers are, that are regulated and organized by an institute that we can trust and all. Thank you. Good morning, once again. Um, so my worthy opponents, they just pointed out that social media brings insecurity. Social media definitely brings insecurity, but there are many influencers and YouTubers who talk about mental health and they, ha they help us in loving ourselves and they help us in being who we are. I, I as a kid was always insecure about my abilities, but me looking at many influencers, me looking at many of my role models, I have come, I have overcome that fear and now I have accepted who I am. Some they even talk about cyberbullying and crimes. Well, for that, I believe there are many um, laws and there are many uh, security um, availabilities that we have to do. Um, there are also some people who say that oh, social media gives Social media spreads more negativity, especially during the times of pandemic. But I totally disagree with that because social media is something that gives us news, fresh news every day, and I think it's always better to look forward for a bitter truth than a false reality. Now, when you talk about social media controlling us, 
I once again just agree with that because social media is not something that created us. We are the creators of social media and I believe if we all work together and, and control ourselves then social media can definitely be controlled by us. Lastly, I would like to say that social media gives voice to a voiceless. It gives it it helps in raising the volume of the voiceless and it, it not only helps a helps a person be a recipient but also a speaker. Well with that I would like to conclude and I still strongly believe that social media is doing more good than harm. Thank you. Cyberbullying. Just as there are bullies in the real world, there are online bullies too. It's inevitable. Let me give you some steps to prevent it. Number one, build up the person's self-esteem. Number two, recognize the bully by the way he or she chats. Number three, report the cyber bully to the cyber police. Fake news. Part of being a good citizen is to check the news before gullibly believing them. Websites like Snopes and Quality Fact filter out fake news and spams. Laziness and addiction. We're all smart people. We can look at a calendar, you know, make a time schedule and say, I'll use social media from 1 to 1.30 p.m. and then go play badminton or study. I mean, that can be easily solved. Just because someone invites you to play a time-wasting game doesn't mean you have to accept it. And what's shallow is you blaming the medium for your decision to waste your time. Even the points you've collected for this debate was done using social media. That speaks for itself. Thank you. We have come to an end with the debate competition. Thank you to all the participants. Please be seated. Now I give time to our respected judge, Serum Bakan. Okay, um, hello everyone and um, very good morning still, I believe, the time zone. Well, um, I think all three of us were seated in awe and still um, marveling at those uh, intelligent and smart students uh, that are present here today. A big and hearty congratulations to each one of you. All of your arguments were all on point. It was, I mean, it was very enriching. More than us judging, I think we were much educated by each of your arguments. And kudos to each one of you for that. I think they all deserve a big round of applause. Uh, and I thank uh, the Pakai, uh, the Tetsu Higher Secondary School for organizing this event. And I believe more of such events should be organized even from various other schools. Because uh, such healthy conversations are needed in society. We may not be able to bring in solutions right away, but these are healthy nuances that we're all looking at every day in and day out. And uh, I, I would feel much, uh, I think I would say that I'm much delighted and privileged to be seated. I would even, uh, not, not even as a judge, but I would be glad to be seated even as an audience. Because each of your words, each of your arguments were not just things that you were saying to defend yourself, but you were educating the mass. And that's the biggest call for this purpose. And I think each of you have done an exceptional job. And whoever is the winner, whoever takes the, uh, the glory, I think uh, the prize is shared by all. So thank you everyone once again. Thank you. So we have a break now.